Okay. What if you started out with the wrong premise? I'm going to expend uh, part of the rest of this month over a few videos here and there. I've already done many. Everybody keeps wanting me to do uh, the double slit experiment. Explaining it away, which I already have done. I've shown in videos previously that uh, I can use just a single needle and pass coherent light directly on top of that needle. And I will get the exact same uh, cancellation and uh, additive patterns on the wall as the so-called double slit experiment. Um, explaining the double slit experiment is both, it's like my book on magnetism. It's like, well, magnetism is really simple. Well, it's very simplex, but explaining it is not simple. I'm going to ultimately end up with a book that's over 500 pages long to explain something as simple as magnetism. I can explain it really simply in a couple sentences, but explaining it fully takes a lot, and that's kind of ironic. Um, nobody even knows what light is. Um, so the notion that we're going to try to explain or understand the double slit experiment um, presupposes that human beings even know what light is, and they don't. Um, the only person that actually came fairly close was Walter Russell. Um, he actually said the same thing that Eric Dollard uh, later said, except in different words. I mean, light doesn't travel. Light is a uh, rate of induction. There's no such thing as a speed of light. Everything in the universe is uh, permeability, permittivity, um, capacitance, and resistance. Um, why the hell do you think light slows down when it enters glass? Depends on what the index of refraction of the glass is. There are different types of glass with different indices of refraction. Well, nothing enters the glass. You have a field perturbation. I mean, if you think that anything emits light, you know, then you're insane, as insane as the rest of humanity, which is basically everybody. When you say everybody's insane, then you're not insulting anybody specifically. You're insulting the entire lot of humanity, but that's okay because... We think we're so smart because we have computers and, you know, oh, obviously we're at advanced, you know, every epoch of human history has always thought that, you know, their shit was advanced and they were always proven wrong. You know, the ancient Egyptians thought they were advanced and they were in many, many respects, obviously. The ancient Greeks, I translate ancient Greek, I mean, a lot more advanced than most humans are today, the Platonists anyway not just Greeks in general, but specifically the Platonists and Neoplatonists. Insanely intelligent. Very intellectually advanced. If we're going to try to explain the double slit experiment, we'd first have to explain light. Light is a coaxial circuit. It has a longitudinal dielectric pulse perturbation, which modern humanity believes is a photon. And then we think we have waves. We have electromagnetic waves. You know, light is EM waves. A wave is not what something... Uh, is god damn it a wave is what something does this is a wave you see this this no that's my goddamn hand flapping no that's a wave you're waving goodbye or hello aloha dosvidanya no that's that's not a wave that's my goddamn hand moving right you think that light is a wave let me repeat that because people don't understand that. A wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does. A wave, people say waves is waves. They go, waves of what, goddammit? Waves of what? If you think that this perfectly sealed, and there is a little bit of argon pumped in here, there are some bulbs that are completely, well, nearly, that perfect vacuum is basically impossible. You can never suck the ether out of anything, though, right? All of the ether was disproven by the Michelson-Morley experiment. No, it wasn't. That doesn't even qualify as an experiment, actually. If you think that this light bulb, when you plug it in, an electrical charge is sent through the coiled uh, tungsten wire that sits between uh, uh, the two prongs, you know, then you're delusional. Is there, well, I turn on the light bulb, emits light. No, what happens is that uh, in very, very, very simple terms, there's like a little human being inside there flapping his arms, creating a field perturbation in the form of generic White, of course, you know, it depends on the Kelvin. White light doesn't really mean anything. We can call a lot of stuff white light. You know, they're completely, you know, it could be uh, fluorescent, incandescent, you know, white, sunlight. You know, they're all different Kelvin temperatures. We don't get into that talk right now. That's kind of obvious. A field perturbation. 
This doesn't emit light. It sets up a field perturbation through the use of uh, electricity. Electricity, by the way, is five times the IQ in a plank of electrification. What, what, what do you think light is? So we first have to define light and realize if we're going to explain, by the way, and if you were to really realize what the hell light is, you would understand what the uh, double slit experiment or paradox. To most people, it's a paradox. I don't understand the double slit experiment. Well, I proved to you that you can get the exact, let's just pretend this is a needle. I made videos on this already, months and months and months ago. Get the exact same results by uh, hitting a tiny, thin, little, sharp uh, needle. Right, not the eye of the needle, okay, just the needle body. You get the exact same results, pointing it at a needle. It'll show perfect interference, exactly the same thing as a double slit experiment on the wall. People don't understand phase shift. When you actually set up a spatial variance, and then you have, of course, you understand how light works. How does light go around corners? That's another mystery that uh, science never solved. You'll never find an answer to that. It's like if you shoot a light down a really long tube, you'll notice that the edges, it flares out. You'll find a lot of uh, nonsense hyperbole about that. If you understand that light is not something that's traveling, okay? We think of light as like, you know, tiny little unicorns being emitted. <laughs> that's how stupid modern science is, you know? It really is that stupid. Tiny little unicorns being emitted from this light bulb, and they're going out, and they're like going through the double slit. No. There's nothing actually traveling through the double slit. There's nothing traveling out of a light bulb. It's a field perturbation. The so-called speed of light is a rate of induction. Then you have to understand, pay attention, pay attention. You got it? Pay attention. You have to understand, understand what a coaxial circuit, you know what a coax cable is? It used to be a ham radio operator. Still kind of am a ham radio operator. You have to understand what a coax cable is, okay? We have a longitudinal core. We have a core right here, and on the outside we have a mesh right the actual em signal gets bounces around the mesh for lowest signal loss in in uh, decibels in gain now we have a coaxial center core okay now let's let's uh, describe a rate of uh, propagation we have to then to define what light is or all emr electromagnetic radiation which is not electromagnetic by definition is a coaxial circuit because this is where the notion of the photon came from along that center conductor of the coax in our coax analogy, which is exactly what light is, it's a coaxial circuit, we come up with the notion of a photon. No, it's a pulse perturbation. This is what uh, modern science and quantum mechanics thinks of photons. If I'm actually, if I was just a lot larger rope, I'd be able to compress it better. If I actually, comp you can see it right there. If I compress it right here, I create this fat, kind of like my stomach, right? We create I need some thicker rope, but you've seen it before. Like bunch up the rope here in the center. You see it's really fat right there in the center, right? That's where science got the idea of the photon. Well, sometimes light's kind of like a particle, and sometimes it's like a wave, and it's kind of like both. It's like a total quantum mystery. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. And here we also get into the conundrum of anything that has transverse volume, whether it's circular polarization or linear polarization, it doesn't matter. The electromagnetic component or constituents of light and of EMR in general have a spatial footprint, a volume. Obviously, something that has no, uh, let's say, for example, imagine something that is infinitely slim, right? It has absolutely no volume. It wouldn't cast a shadow, would it? No, it wouldn't. EM casts a shadow, in you will, uh, in the analogy of, uh, of uh, the emission of light. Therefore, it has a rate of induction. Anything that actually has a spatial volume, specifically anything that has magnitude, has therefore a limit, and that limit is its rate of induction, which is what we call the speed of light. But it's not a speed at all. It's a rate of induction. It means that anything that has a magnitudinal volume at any frequency or any wavelength, whether it's circular polarization or linear polarization, must suffer a maximum rate of induction, which is the speed of light. But it's not a speed, it's a rate of induction. However, along the center part of that EMR, we have a longitudinal circuit, which does not suffer that. We have a pulse perturbation, which 
And this it gets to in explaining the uh, wave particle duality, and it's not a duality at all because a duality, the word duality, I'm going to define the word duality for you really simply here. Duality means something that stupid human beings don't understand because there's absolutely nothing in the purest parts of fundamental nature and field mechanics that has any connection to a duality. Nature does not deal in duality. That's like saying Mother Nature has got her hand out in friendship on one hand, and on the other hand, she's got a, a knife ready to stab you in the back. And that's the duality. She's both friendly and a murderer. Well, that's kind of true. It's like birth, old age, and death, right? That's something else. Mother Nature doesn't deal in duality. Now let's imagine a coaxial circuit. Let's just take the center conductor. Well, the center conductor has no spatial volume, therefore it must, uh, must have instantaneous action at a distance. That's true. This is why dielectric impulses have been measured to travel, and they don't travel at all, it's a rate of induction, infinitely faster than the so-called speed of light. Eric Dollard talks about this, worked in electrical systems, and Nikola Tesla talked about it too. I mean, uh, the, the speed of light is not a maximum, it's not a limit, it's a rate of induction. And uh, if you eliminate uh, you know, the transverse components of uh, light, and then of course you don't have an EMR, you don't have electromagnetic radiation, you're able to travel faster than the speed of light. I've, let's just demonstrate this here. Preferably, I would want to use something solid like this, okay? Anything that happens on one side instantaneously happens on another, right? Same thing with a piece of rope, right? Any sort of pull or tug on one end or the other, that's a longitudinal. That's the coaxial, uh, the center conductor of light, of EMR, okay? What about the uh, transverse vibrations of light, EMR? Well, it's not instantaneous, and here we have the rate of induction, or the so-called speed, so instead of this number, what if I do this? Well, there's a delay. If I start something here, it doesn't hit until over there with a delay, right? Instantaneous, delay. Right? Delay, delay, instantaneous. Let me see. Instantaneous, delay, delay, delay. Let's see. So anything that partakes of a transverse perturbation, i.e. electricity and magnetism, and electricity is a hybrid, because electricity is phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. It's dielectricity and magnetism. This is how electromagnet works, too. Electricity doesn't... Uh, um, turn into magnetism, electricity actually drives an electromagnet through the loss of its dielectric component, then the only thing that's left is magnetism. You feed enormous amounts of electricity into a coil, let's say a large electromagnet on a scrapyard, electricity doesn't turn into magnetism. It doesn't induce a magnetic charge. What happens is, is that electricity loses its dielectric component, which is lost in counter space, in the coil, and what is left is what happens when you dump an enormous amount of dielectricity. See, if electricity is dielectricity and magnetism, that means once you dump out the dielectric component of electricity, the only thing you're left with is enormous amounts of magnetism. That's how an electromagnet works, by the way. Yes, that's something else people also don't understand. Feed an enormous amount of electricity, you lose this dielectric component, the only thing you're left with is magnetism. Explaining the wave-particle duality, which is not a duality at all, nor is it confusing, nor is it perplexing, stems from the fact that humanity and science, so to say, science is a quest for truth, but science is not on the quest for truth. It's on the quest for peer-reviewed, uh, uh, you know, a mutual circle jerking. Uh, all these people do is get together and they try to agree on something. You know, the holistic uh, quest for truth has uh, been lost ages and ages ago. You'd first have to define what the hell light is. And nobody knows what light is. So when you talk about the double slit experiment and the wave particle duality, human beings don't even understand what light is. They, there is no book on science that has ever defined what the hell a field is. Ever. It's never happened. Go find the definition of a field. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. We think things emit light. Nothing emits light. It's a field perturbation. You know? 
Do you know what wireless power induction is? I mean, that shit's as real as a heart attack. Let's go out into the deepest, darkest parts of space where there are no particles. Well, actually, there are little hydrogen particles floating around. And, uh, you know, let's power a light bulb through a coiled array that is pointed at it like a Yagi antenna, which is a directional uh, a power induction, and light up this light bulb. You ever get in the fluorescent tube close to a Tesla coil? You know how it lights up? Well, there's nothing existing between the Tesla coil and... Sure there is. There's a field. Really? And what the hell is a field? A field is not particles. What the hell is lighting the light bulb? Well, it's a field perturbation. You Maxwellian field equation. Now, the Maxwellian field equations ever define what a field is. They only explain effects over a given vector, uh, specified, uh, excuse me, extrapolated in change over a specific period of time. Maxwellian field equations in no way, shape, or form ever define a field. Humanity as A never defined a field. God damn it. And secondly, never defined what the hell light is. Light both is not a particle. Well, sure, light is electromagnetism. It's a wave and a particle. This is a wave. No, it's not. It's my goddamn hand. That's a wave. No, a wave isn't what something is. It's what something is. So light is not a wave because a wave is not something. A wave is what something does. Wave. This is a wave. No, it's your hand flapping. No, well, it's a photon. The construct, and it's only that, a construct, it's a concept invented by humanity to try to understand light. The notion of a photon particle is absolutely 100% arbitrary and has no basis in reality, has no basis in nature, and it has no empirical evidence whatsoever. There has never been any such thing as a photon particle ever observed, ever. It's absolute nonsense. It's bullshit. If, that, if you believe that... And after the end of day of shooting with your camera, you should take the lens off and dump out all those photon particles. Because your camera must be full of those goddamn photon particles, right? Humanity is not as smart as it thinks it is. Humanity has never defined what light is, nor what a field is. Until it does, it's sure as hell never going to explain the double slit experiment. And Mother Nature does not deal in dualities. There are no dualities in nature, not the real nature. That's the bullshit that came out of the mouths of stupid human humanity. And yes, I said it, humanity is stupid. And it always has been stupid. As long as it progresses, that's okay. It's okay to be stupid as long as you don't think you know the answer to shit. It's like, you know, I'm stupid, but I want to know the answers to stuff. Because I can guarantee you this much right now. Anybody that thinks they know the answers to shit never goes looking for the answers to that. Because if you think you know the answer, then you don't go looking for the answer. I know the answer to that. It's like, no, you don't. Yeah, I do. That's why I'm not looking for the answer to it, because I already know the answer. And when you think you know, you you think you know the answer, but you really don't, that makes you an idiot. It makes the rest of humanity an idiot, too. It's just like a pig with its head buried in the muck. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. If you like this video and drop a buck or two, tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Bye.